My Mother's Fables Fairy Tales I grew up with Aesop's fables of the more sinister kind, in which a child would be forced to line up behind other children, to slap their teacher in the face, and the young red guard stood by, watching. Those adolescents were crazed cults, their hands a stampede, their mouths deep trenches of bone. In love and in war. There was a boy who loved my mother so much he hid his steam bun in the haystack, told her to eat while he did her share of hard labour. Urged sleep when the sun hung high at noon. She called him Pumpkin, since she missed the gourd's reassuring weight, the land as starved as she was. Red Night Animals crowded the bathtub, which became God's Ark the night the flood came. The guards took everything deemed bourgeois, a ceramic teapot, a mechanical watch, and my grandfather, who refused to be saved. My grandmother believed in God, so she forgave their fists, called them sons. My grandfather's heart. A beating thing. A delicate muscle stops its cyclical motion, crushed by too much terror. He was only admitted to the workers' hospital after a former employee lied, claimed him as one of their own. An eleven-year-old sprints towards her father in this blood-lit mise-en-scene. A scripted tragedy. That child is my mother. Listen. There is no measure for the tempo of grief. My mother would raid the fridge at midnight for a salted egg, some pickled carrots. I didn't know we were safe in a different city, a different year. Once, during a bedtime storytelling, she sobbed until I cried for help. But father was asleep. <laughs>